Now I would like to invite Dr. Harsh sir to please uh, come and talk to us about posterior AGV, a uh, technique which he now often uses in cases of tricky uh, glaucoma cases. Thank you, Nitesh, for having me here. And uh, <coughs> indeed, I am truly grateful to uh, our Aetna people and specifically Dr. Abhinandar Gupta who introduced me to this because uh, for, a, for putting a valve, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I keep getting very, very difficult cases, mostly one-eyed cases, operated two, three times. So it's quite a mess. And in those situations, sometimes all that is left for you to do is check uh, career. <coughs> hmm. That uh, there may be some very, very specific areas through which you can put your valve. Uh, and putting an anterior valve, yes, we have all seen that in so many situations uh, the valves can be put. But what happens here is we have been putting the valves in all these situations uh, which are very, very common. But anterior valves themselves have their own problems <coughs> like shallow AC and you touch the cornea and you are in serious trouble. You can have choroidals. You can have corneal touch. And if you put, a, there's an AC lens plus you put a valve there, it is a recipe for disaster for later things. And I have been telling everybody not to do an anterior valve in eye syndrome because invariably the corneas are not good and you'll end up with that. So uh, I tell them that while things are okay, please do a cataract extraction and put a posterior valve, but people will not listen, end up doing a PK later and then doing a posterior valve. Any endothelial decomposition you have, any disorganized anterior segment, any PKs, all these situations are one in which we have to do a posterior valve. There's absolutely no compromise on that. And uh, so this is one of the patients that came to us, uh, completely disorganized anterior segment, one-eyed patient, lens is tilted, pressure is 50, cornea, you can see how it is. And that is the beauty of our retina surgeon. So this, uh, Dr. Gupta said, no, it doesn't matter, I will do a good bit technique. And you actually need a not a good vitrectomy, but a very, very good vitrectomy to be able to put this valve over there and feel safe. Because if the vitrectomy is not good, you are in trouble. So this is the standard procedure that we follow. Prime the valve and uh, attach it on with non-absorbable <coughs> sutures. Uh, this, so this is the Ahmed glaucoma valve that we invariably put. And uh, we create a scleral pocket and after that, over to the retina chaps and uh, always you know the the big advantage in these cases is that if something goes wrong you have at least one shoulder to cry on <laughs> so <laughs> it is better to involve as many people in these one-eyed patients <laughs> as <laughs> possible so they do a very good vitrectomy inject tricord induce a pvd which has to be done if pvd is not induced if vitrectomy till the base is not clear you are in serious trouble and that day we were having another course and the PGI people exactly told me, yes, sir, you are absolutely right. We sometimes leave the PVD and a second, th within a week you find that things are bad. One of the things that we learned in uh, the paper was that uh, at this edge, uh, we had two cases of uh, exposure. So what we learned over the time was, uh, so anyway, this is the same case in which first we had done this posterior valve and then uh, uh, there was a PK done along with a glue diode. And this was really such a comfortable uh, end dessert for us. What we learned over the time then was that I would now cover the entire thing uh, with a scleral patch. So we have uh, the initial uh, scleral pocket and then there is a scleral patch behind. Now, uh, and I was t telling everybody do not put this scleral patch here. A lot of people are very comfortable, they'll not make a scleral pocket, they'll just put a scleral patch over there. And what happens is, I had this one young chap who came to me and said, Sir, what have you done? My girlfriend just ran away and she said, the moment you look down, you are all white, white like a ghost. So the trick is that it, the, the, when you have a scleral pocket, this is very, very normal. And nothing abnormal looks over there. So you can, but the posterior part is also to be covered with a scleral patch. And people keep asking us, why don't you put uh, <coughs> uh, uh, this uh, 
there is ahmed has also created a pass play in a clip which you can put and use this which we are not using now we did start off with that but ultimately what we realized was that the clip is so huge that the moment you try and uh, uh, put it the you just can't get the conjunctiva over it and if you the chances of exposures are very very high so we gave it up and we are just doing it the way you saw it so this is just uh, so basically you have to have an a fake or a pseudo fake to do a posterior valve 23 gauge needle is to be used go 2 to 3 mm behind keep the tube long so that it is seen in the initially i thought oh my god the tube is coming in the pupillary area and the patient will say what has happened none of the patients ever has complained about that so that is really strange and so we have done huge number of patients now this is 60 which is the paper we published malignant glaucoma sur superior quadrant was not available uh, shallow acs many traps already done pk <coughs> with pass tilted iol bad corneas which we have seen already nvgs so this paper we published in uh, panam of thermolin 2020 and uh, the problems was basically that there could be a vitreous incarceration if we were not careful in the vitrectomy you have to have good not good a really good retina surgeon with you and you require a regular retina follow up there were choroidal mild vitreous hemorrhage vitreous blocking the tube tube exposure as i already told you but the results overall were good and as we checked up the previous papers also everybody has said the reduction in iop was similar in anterior and the posterior group so no significant difference basically but please remember posterior valve is a complex situation it is a complex procedure you need a very specialized trained people for that and so for routine purposes anterior valve is the way to go only when the things that i showed you the cornea is not good the ac is very shallow so you just put it there and then later you get into trouble by having a corneal opacity it is not going to work out so please in these situations you will have to put a posterior valve so this is one of the girls which was done outside things are very very bad over here in one of the eyes so in the other eye we put a posterior valve superior area is already covered with multiple uh, traps and a valve also and she did very well just a 10 year old girl seeing only from this eye now and that is what gives us hope and a smile thank you very much for your kind hearing uh, thank you sir uh, for a very nice presentation uh, you have given an insight uh, the patients which were refused initially that nothing can be done nothing can happen and you are going to go blind and dr harsh has taken care of these patients and years together we have able to benefit uh, various uh, one night patients uh, and bad patients who are maintaining ambulatory kind of a vision and doing their uh, jobs uh, one thing uh, many times uh, what happens uh, you can land up with a choroidal detachment post operatively and the skirt of the vitreous enters into the uh, tube uh, once you are doing a resurgery to remove the incarceration of the vitreous from the tube it is important not to cut the vitreous once uh, vitreous which is incarcerated into the tube what you have to do use just a suction and pull this uh, vitreous out of the tube it comes like in solid thing and or a semi solid thing and then you start cutting uh, that and uh, by this way you are able to again uh recanalize the tract and the tube starts functioning why not use the posterior chamber uh, implant the things between the iris and the iris sorry why not use the posterior chamber iris yeah only thing is that when the things are very disorganized and that is also an option that go behind the iris over the lens the chances of bleeding are more and that uh, you are touching the plas placata so chances of bleed sir no 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 it's clear clear fixated the, is 1.2 uh, mm 1.5 mm so actually you are just bypassing the plas placata yes, so, so but uh, if you enter through the iris root and plas placata one or two we initially started this and we really landed up with a very bad hyphema in these cases 
and gradually we learned ki not to go through the past placata. Yeah, there is a course and this principal who in practice <coughs> said that I started exactly what you were saying. So it is not, you can't be sure where your head goes. And if you are not sure in private practice, of course, you can get into a serious mess. So it is better to go into a place where you are 100% sure that things will not go wrong. And the diameter of the tube is pretty more than the haptic size. So the chance of it rubbing the back surface of the iris and all will be much higher. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly.